Now, chapter 11 could have also been part of chapter 10, except it would have made it a huge chapter. It would have been too big. Because chapter 11 continues some of the same topics, but just adds some more stuff. Chapter 11 introduces the formal definition of torque, R crossed into F. For chapter 11 introduces the formal definition of angular momentum, L equals R cross into P, that's angular momentum. And it introduces the other equation for angular momentum, L equals I omega. And it also introduces uh, this equation here, torque equals dL dt which is the rotational counterpart of the equation F equals MA. No, sorry, F equals dP dt. Remember, this was, we introduced this in chapter nine. We said force is the rate of change of momentum. Well, torque is the rate of change of angular momentum. And uh, this one is the rotational counterpart of the equation P equals MV. Linear momentum is mass times uh, velocity. And then linear momentum is replaced by angular momentum, L. Mass is replaced by omega uh, I, and then V is replaced by omega, you see? So chapter 11 introduces these two equations, these, this one, this one. Actually, these are definitions. This is definition, this is a definition. This one is more uh, an equation that applies to rotational objects. And then this is an equation. So the definitions are these, these two are definitions. And then in chapter 11, we also deal with collisions. Uh, just like in chapter 9, we dealt with one-dimensional collisions. In chapter 11, we deal with two-dimensional collisions. So we're, we have to consider both uh, uh, linear momentum and angular momentum. So we'll do a problem of something like this later on. Remember, I talked about this a little bit uh, last week, too. Something hits something, and then it makes it rotate. So find the, uh, uh, the rate at which it rotates. So we've got to apply uh, conservation of angular momentum, conservation of linear momentum. And if it's an elastic collision, then we've got to apply conservation of kinetic energy. So we have to conserve three things, you see. So we'll do that on Wednesday. Um, OK, now let me talk a little bit more about the cross product. Torque is R crossed into F. Now, earlier in chapter 10, we focused on the magnitude of torque is RF sine theta. So we did RF sine theta. And, and most uh, problems in chapter 10, the theta was 90 anyway. So when you did sine of theta, it just became 1. But that's not always the case. You could have a case where uh, the theta is not 90, you know. And uh, so let's now, let me talk a little bit about the cross product, how to do the cross product. Then we'll do a good example with that. We can say here, uh, let's talk a little bit about the cross product. Cross product. And then let's compare that to the dot product. Okay, when you take the dot product between two vectors, it actually gives you a scalar, a certain number, right? This is known as the dot product, or the other name for it is the scalar product, the dot or scalar product. So when you take the dot product, it gives you a scalar. And the magnitude of that scalar is equal to the magnitude of A, magnitude of B, cosine of the angle between them. Okay, The physical meaning of the dot product, it also has a physical, a geometrical meaning. If this is A, and if this is B, the dot product gives you B cos theta is the projection of B onto A, you see? So B cos theta is this, L, is this amount right here. 
So you can kind of think of it like this, B cos theta. So the, the dot product is the magnitude of A times the projection of vector B onto A. We can call that B parallel, the parallel component of B onto A. You see? That's what the dot product is. It's the magnitude of A times the projection of B onto A. Almost think of it as the shadow of B. If the sun was up there, the shadow of B onto A, that's this thing. That times that, that gives you the dot product. Um, let's see here. Or you could think of it the other way, too. You can do the projection of A onto B. You see? The projection of A onto B would be this one here, right here, right? A parallel, that would be that vector, right? So the, the, cross, the dot product would be the A parallel times the magnitude of B. You can do the projection of B onto A times A, or you can do the projection of A onto B times B. That's the dot product, okay? Now, certain things in physics are, uh, are conveniently defined as dot product, such as work. Work is a classic example of this. Work is defined as the dot product of force and displacement. There's a very good reason why it's defined as a dot product. Okay? Uh, when a force is applied to a certain object and it drags it a certain distance, Okay, so let's say, let's go back to here. And the force drags it a certain distance. And here's the displacement. The work done is equal to the projection of F onto D times D, right? So the, um, the component of the force that's actually doing the work is the what? The parallel component, you see? F parallel. So the work done is equal to F parallel times magnitude of D. The F perpendicular is wasted. So when you drag something, what matters is the F parallel, the parallel component along the displacement. So that's why work is defined as a dot product. The other reason work is defined as a dot product is because you end up with a certain scalar. You, you don't end up with a vector. Work needs to be a scalar because it just tells you how much work you've done on something. Okay, it's just a quantity. Okay? Plus another good reason why work is a dot product is because when the force is uh, at 90 degrees, How much work do you do on the object? F times D times uh, cosine of 90 is zero, right? So when you apply a force that's perpendicular to the displacement, you do no work on the object. Just like in circular motion. When you turn something in circular motion, your force is perpendicular to the motion, so you apply no work. Let's see. Now, certain other things are defined as cross products, which is the torque, okay? Torque is a cross product. So let's learn about the uh, cross product. The cross product gives you a third vector, vector C. The magnitude of vector C is magnitude of A, magnitude of B times sine of the angle between A and B, okay? So this time, it's A times B times sine of the angle, not cosine, okay? So if A is like this, B is like this, what's the geometrical meaning of the cross product? Anyone remember? What's the geometrical meaning of the magnitude of the cross product? Well, 